Hi kitties. We're going to be looking at video 9.3 today where we learn to calculate the pH of strong acids and base solutions as well as weak acid and base solutions. So we're going to discover the difference between the two right now. So what does it mean to be a strong acid, weak acid, strong base, weak base? Um, so we're going to start here. You'll notice that our strong acid solution shows complete dissociation. It's only one directional. So if I started with 100 HAs, I'm going to finish with 100 hydrogen ions. It's complete dissociation. What about this guy? Don't care, spectator ion, for our purposes right now. Now, which acids are the strong acids? So you'll notice we have hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, nitric, sulfuric, and perchloric. These acids are all completely dissociated in solution. They're strong acids. They completely dissociate. All right, here's an example. What is the pH of a 0.097 hydrochloric acid solution? Hydrochloric acid is one of our strong acid solutions, so we know that it's going to dissociate completely. So if I have HCl, it's going to all dissociate into the hydrogen ions, which we care about because we're doing acid-base chemistry, and then chloride ions, which are going to be our spectators, which we don't care so much about. So, kind of doing an ice table in our heads here, we can see that because there's total dissociation, if the concentration of this starts out at 0 0.097, the amount of hydrogen ion is going to be 0 0.097. So this becomes a really quick calculation. To find pH, we simply do the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, which is 0 0.097. As you grab your calculator and practice that, you will see that the pH is 1.01, .01, which makes sense. It's an acid. Of course, it's less than 7. Okay, so what about strong bases? We know bases are hydroxide salts. They produce hydroxides when dissolved. So any metal hydroxide is going to be a strong base as long as it's soluble. So usually we're talking about group 1 or group 2 hydroxides. So I'm talking about sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and a little bit of calcium hydroxide or magnesium hydroxide. But our first two groups on the periodic table, those metals bonded to a hydroxide form a strong base. So here would be an example. What is the pH of a 0.45 molar sodium hydroxide solution? So it's the same type of idea. We know that it's a strong base. So if I have NaOH, it's going to dissociate into Na. Again, complete dissociation. Na has a plus one charge and OH. Again, the idea is we don't really care about the sodium. That's a spectator ion in this uh, type of problem. But if this starts at 0 0.045 molar, it's going to form what? 0 0.045 molar here. So now I can simply take the negative log of log of 0 0.045 to get my pOH. And that turns out to be 1.35. Now, because I did the negative log of my hydroxide, I have a pOH. So 14 minus that pOH of 1.35 is going to give me my pH. So 14 minus 1.35 is going to be what? 12.65. So it's the same idea, but I just have to subtract it from 14 because it's a hydroxide and I was asking about pH. Now here comes the fun part. We have weak acids as well, and you'll notice now that we have equilibrium happening. The reaction is going forward, but it's also happening in reverse, meaning that not all of the hydrogens are going to be donated out into the solution. Some of the hydrogens stay attached to the anion. So of course we're going to have to start 
talking about equilibrium here. So there are literally thousands of different ions that act as weak acids. Anything that can grab a hold of a hydrogen ion is going to be a weak acid. So we know we're going to end up working with an equilibrium expression here. And if I start with a certain amount of, I'll just say, I have a concentration initial. I have an initial concentration of this stuff. I'll call it concentration initial. A certain amount of it's going to react. How much? X and X. I really don't know because that would depend on the value. So if I start looking at an equilibrium expression, by the way, I'm going to call this a K because I'm going to do products over reactants like we did last unit. But you'll notice each of these values in my product are X's, X times X. So I'm going to call this X squared. So how much of the HA had to react? Well, it had to go down by X. So this ends up being my initial concentration minus X. By the way, this particular equation is one we can use for all of these type of calculations because it's always going to be X squared over whatever our initial concentration was minus X. So how do we solve these things? We're going to use something called the method of successive approximations because this thing in its like true form, I know it's not perfect here, but um, this thing in its true form is actually a quadratic equation. I have an X squared, I have an X, and I have a constant, Ka. So the Ka tells you how strong that acid is. The stronger the acid, the larger the Ka value, because that would mean your products are favored, which means you're producing more hydrogen ions. So it's always x squared divided by concentration minus x. So here are the rules. We're going to ignore x in the denominator. How can we do that? Well, these are weak acids. This Ka value over here is actually very small. So if I do concentration minus a very small number, it still stays close to its initial concentration. It doesn't change much because X is small. So concentration minus X is essentially just the concentration. So we ignore X in the denominator and then we're going to solve for the X up here. How do we do that? Well, you solve for chicken. You just move your concentration back up here, essentially multiplying it by Ka. Then what we're going to do is solve for that X value. How do we do that? Concentration times Ka, and then we take the square root of that. That will be our x value. We insert that x value, once we solve for it, back into the denominator. So we approximate it by ignoring it the first time in the denominator, solving for it in the numerator. Then we plug it back into the denominator. So you're getting a little closer to the answer each time you do this. Thus, it's called the method of successive approximations. Great way to solve a quadratic if um, you don't need exact values. So we're going to insert the value into the x in the denominator, if, that's a lot of i's, if it doesn't change the concentration value. So sometimes the concentration minus x won't change the concentration value, then we can just ignore that. We'll see that come up in a second. When we solve for x, remember x is actually our hydrogen ion concentration. So once we get that value, it'll be easy to find the pH. Okay? All right, let's take a look at this example. So we have a pH. All right, let's take a look at this problem here. We're trying to find the pH of a 0 0.134 molar HC2H3O2. That's acetic acid solution, given the Ka of 1.9 times 10 to the negative third. So this is a weak acid. As soon as you see a Ka value, you know you're dealing with a weak acid. Ka values for strong acids are very large. They don't really show up as data because they completely dissociate. This one, its product over reactant ratio is 1.7 times 10 to the negative third. So if we go back and do what I said, we're always going to solve this as Ka equals x squared over the initial concentration of the acid minus x. And I said the first thing we're going to do is pretend this x doesn't exist. So I'm going to say my Ka, 1.7 times 10 to the negative third equals x squared over the concentration, which is 
point zero one three four so again solving for chicken I move that up here which means I'm multiplying the two then I take the square root of that value all right so I find out that x equals 4.8 times 10 to the negative third so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this value and reinsert it where this x was in the denominator so we're kind of closing in on the actual value. Granted, when we eliminated it, it wasn't exact. So 1.7 times 10 to the negative third, that's my Ka, equals x squared over concentration 0.0125. Minus what we had back here, which is 4.8 times 10 to the negative third, which makes that what? 0 0.0048? Yeah, that's right. So again, solving for chicken, what I'm really going to do is do this problem first. 0 0.034 minus 0 0.0048. Then I'm going to end up moving that to the other side and multiplying it by my Ka value and then taking the square root of that to get my answer. All right, so now when I solve for that, I get 0 0.0038. So 3.8 times 10 to the negative third. This, again, because I'm dealing with a Ka, an acid, our hydrogen ion concentration is what that x value is. So how do I find the pH of that? I simply take the negative log of Point zero zero three eight, which equals two point four two. Ah, that makes sense. So again, what we're trying to do here is we ignore the x in the denominator. So it becomes initial concentration times Ka equals x squared. Solve for your x. Reinsert that x back into the denominator. By the way, sometimes that x is not going to change the concentration. It's going to be so small that it doesn't make a difference, which is fine. We then multiply our new values times our Ka, take the square root of that. That gives us our x value, which is our hydrogen ion concentration. Negative log of that gives us our pH. All right, what about weak bases? So weak bases are really things that just pull hydrogen ions towards themselves. We're doing the bronsted lowry definition here. You put them in water, they will take the hydrogens away from the water to create hydroxide ions, which makes them basic. There are thousands of them. Most anions will do this. If I put something that's negative in water, an anion, it will sometimes steal the hydrogen from the water to create hydroxide ions. So let's take a look at how we calculate for weak bases. Ah, it's going to end up being the same darn thing because I know... In this problem, I have sodium cyanide. This cyanide ion, the sodium, by the way, is a spectator ion, is going to find some water in that solution and steal its hydrogen ion to become HCN, its conjugate acid. But that will then leave hydroxide ions behind, making it basic. So, again, when we do equilibrium expressions, this guy's a liquid right here. So it wouldn't appear in our equilibrium expression. So we have a K value, which in this case is KB, because I'm talking about a base, is going to be the HCN concentration times hydroxide ion concentration. Ooh, that's important because we're doing acid and bases. Over the concentration of that cyanide ion, CN. So again, just ignoring the sodium. But if we go back and we look at this, it starts out as a 0 0.026 molar solution. 0 0.0026. Some of it reacts. Like I said, we're ignoring our water. How much of this forms? X and X. So when we go back and do our math, 
this becomes KB, which is given in the problem, something you look up on the table. Our KB value is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the negative 9th equals what? X squared, X times X, over our initial concentration, 0 0.0026 minus however much reacted, x. And we're going to solve this the same way, method of successive approximations. So what I'm going to do is ignore the x down here. Move it over here, solving for chicken. So 0 0.0026 times the Ka value, 8.8 .8 times 10 to the negative 9th, then they take the square root of that. All right, so what I get is x equaling 4.8 times 10 to the negative 6. What I said earlier is, like, we're going to reinsert this value back into our denominator here because this is supposed to be 0 0.0026 minus x. But if I actually do that on my calculator, 0 0.0026 minus 4.8 times 10 to the negative 6 doesn't change the value of 0 0.0026 if we go back to our sig fig rules. This number is too small. It really doesn't influence this. So what I can do is say, all right, because my x value does not change the concentration, I can go ahead and say, then that must be hydroxide ion concentration. So what am I going to do now to find the pH? I'm going to do the negative log of that number. So negative log of 4.8 times 10 to the negative 6. Negative log of 4.8 times 10 to the negative 6 gives me my pOH. 5.3. So again, because this is a base, this is hydroxide ion concentration, I do 14 minus that pOH. So 14 minus 5.3 gives me 8.7. Here's my pH. <laughs> so, strong acids, strong bases, assume that the concentration is the same. They're going to dissociate completely. So if I start with a certain molarity of HCl, the hydrogen ion concentration is that same molarity. Negative log of that gives me the pH. If it is a weak acid or weak base, we end up with this X squared over concentration minus X. It's always the same formula. We end up multiplying our concentration times our Ka and taking the square root to find that approximation of x. We reinsert that into the denominator, take our concentration minus that value, and resolve. That gives us a good approximation of our hydrogen or hydroxide concentration. So we'll practice this when I see in a bit.